Hi, this is the second video of Chapter 5, General Equilibrium and Economic Efficiency. In this video, we are going to talk about the Edge Word Box. So just to begin, when we studied the perfectly competitive market, we saw that an unregulated competitive market is efficient because it maximizes consumer and producer surplus. So when we have a competitive market that is not regulated, this situation is the most efficient one because this situation is going to maximize the consumer surplus and the producer surplus compared to a situation with any regulation. Then to examine the concept of economic efficiency in more detail, we begin this chapter with an exchange economy, analyzing the behavior of two consumers who can trade either of two goods between themselves. However, it can, it can also be applied to the trade between two countries. So instead of two uh, consumers, sometimes try to think that we are talking about two countries and they trade between them. So suppose that we have two goods that are initially allocated so that both consumers can make themselves better, better off to by trading by with each other. Okay, so both consumers can make themselves better off by trading with each other. This means that the initial allocation of goods is economically inefficient because they can find a situation where they can be better off. In an efficient allocation of goods, no one can be, be, can be made better off without making someone else worse off. Okay, so this is what it means. An efficient allocation of goods means that no one can be made better off without making someone else worse off. In the subsection that follow, we will show why mutually beneficial trades will result in an efficient allocation of goods. So just to continue, here we have this table from the Pindi book, and as a rule, we know that voluntary trade between two people or two countries is mutually beneficial. And to see how trade makes people better off, let's look at two person exchange in detail that we have here. We have two people who are James and Karen. Both people know each other's preferences and exchanging goods seems uh, to involve that we have zero transactions cost. Because it, it means that we assume that each other know the other consumer preferences and then also we have zero transactions cost. Then we have the that the the marginal rate of substitution for current is equal to 3 and the marginal rate of substitution for James is one half. Okay, so suppose that James and Karen have 10 units of food and 6 units of clothing between them. Then if we sum the initial allocation of James with the initial allocation of Karen, we find that we have 10 total units of food in this economy and also that the economy produces a total of 1 plus 5, 6 units of clothing. And they are going to divide it between them, between the only consumers that we have, James and Karen, or the two countries in our market. So this table is showing that initially James has 7 units of food, 1 unit of clothes, and Karen has 3 units of food, 5 units of clothes. So to decide whether a trade between them and, uh, will be advantageous, we need to know which are the preferences for food and clothing. And this is what we have here. The marginal rate of substitution of current is 3. Because current has a lot of clothing and little food, so her marginal rate of substitution is like, like this. And for James, it's just, just the opposite. He has a lot of food and very few clothes, so he will exchange only, only 0.5 or one half units of clothing to get one more unit of food. There, here we have room for mutually advantageous trade because James values clothing more than more highly than Karen does. To get another unit of food, Karen would like to trade up to three units of clothing, but James will give up one unit of food for 0.5 unit of clothing. So the actual terms of the trade depend on the bargaining process between them. And on the possible outcome that we have, 
There is the trade of one unit of food by James for anywhere, any, any number between 0.5 and 3 units of clothing from Karen. So suppose that Karen is going to offer James one unit of clothing for one unit of food, for example, and then James decides to agree. Both of them will be better off. James will have more clothing, which he values more than food, and Karen will have more food, which he values more than clothing. So if they trade and James decide to give up one unit of food to Karen and Karen give up one unit of clothing to Jane, they will trade and they will be better off because they, they wanted to trade. James had too many food and Karen had too many clothes. So the final allocation, if they did, at the end they agree, will be a better situation compared to the first one. So whenever two consumers' marginal rate of substitution, like here, are different, there is room for mutually beneficial trade because the allocation of resources is inefficient and trading will make both consumers better off. Then, conversely, to achieve economic efficiency, the two consumers' marginal rate of substitution must be equal. Then the export box comes for this trade, to show this trade, how this trade is beneficial, which trades can occur, and which of those trades will allocate goods efficiently among the consumers, and how much better off will consumers than me? Then we can answer all these questions for any two person, two good example by using a diagram called the export box. And how can we uh, draw this Edward box? Let's see it in the next slide. So here we have the horizontal axis is going to describe the number of units of food and the vertical axis is going to describe the number of the, the units of clothing. So here we have again food and here we have again clothing. Karen will have her origin here and James will have his origin here. So zero for James and zero in the opposite side of the diagram or the box for Karen. So the units of food for Karen will go from zero to 10, in this axis from zero to 10, and from zero to six units of clothing, and just the opposite for James, from zero to 10, and from zero to six. And they have to divide the food and clothes between them. So um, each point in the box is going to describe the market baskets for both consumers. We will read, for example, for James, we find that in point A, he's going to have one unit of clothes, seven units of food. And in point A, currents will have three units of food so at the end, 3 plus 7 is 10, which is the total of the economy, and 5 units of clothes. 5 plus 1 is 6 units of clothes, which is the total of the economy. If they decide to trade, and James gives 1 unit of food to Karen, Karen will end up with 4 units of food, and James 6 units of food, and James will take 1 unit of clothes from Karen, ending with two units of clothes for James and from five to four units of clothes for Karen. I hope to see it. At the end, we will be in point B. Then if they wanted to trade and they trade, this final point will be more efficient than A because they wanted to trade. So they will end up in a better situation. Then, a trade from A to B made both Karen and James better off, but how can we know if B is an efficient allocation? Can we know it? The answer is going to depend on whether James and Karen's marginal rate of substitution are the same at B, which in turn depends on the shape of their indifference curves. Okay, so let's have a look in the next video to this point.